Hello guys, in today's video I'm gonna walk you through the list of extensions that I have in my Visual Studio Code. So let's switch to Visual Studio Code and start exploring. Okay, when I click here on the list of extensions, uh, we can see that I have 25 extensions installed here. So uh, we'll start with the first one here. The first one is called Angular Language Service. This extension helps me uh, with the uh, Angular templates, actually in a way of adding some kind of IntelliSense uh, to uh, my Angular template and actually to Angular uh, string interpol interpolation here. So uh, to show you that, uh, in this component I will add a new uh, variable name and equals to some name and also I'll add some object of data okay age and here sorry okay we have like name and data when I go to the component here and add the curly braces here and when I add name we can see that I have now that IntelliSense here and also if I add a data and add dot here I can select age or name here so uh, this extension is actually doing that Angular language service so the next one here is Angular schematics uh, this uh, extension is a set of uh, schematics for creating uh, component services or any other schematics here in Angular uh, just by right clicking on a place or a component or folder or a location where we want to generate that kind of a schematic. So uh, to demonstrate this uh, I'm going here to this standalone component components and here in button in components I'll right click and select angular generate a component so here I'll say a new component hit enter and we have uh, some options here that we can select by default I'll just select the def default component and confirm after that uh, this, the extension is running just uh, uh, as we can see here a command to generate a component into that uh, path that I just selected when I was right clicking here so I have this component also we can create any other schematics such as service and I can just say okay new service hit enter and we can add more options for example to have that flat when generating to be in the, this folder without uh, adding it to another folder true confirm and we can see that we have a new service here so there's a lot of options uh, in this extension but that are some here so this is angular schematics now uh, there's another one that i use it is called arrow function snippets as the name says uh, it is a list of uh, snippets that we can use in our jsts gs6 ts6 or view applications so to demonstrate some of uh, these uh, for example I could add here let's say uh, or anywhere here just to demonstrate uh, uh, generate a uh, arrow function by typing this hit tab and just get uh, some name and some parameter and we can add this and do and do something with this so uh, in in uh, in in, in uh, Angular, this is working differently, but uh, just showing you how to do these things. Oops. Okay, here. So this is some uh, some kind of it. Also, we could use uh, something else, for example, and filter some array. Let's say we have uh, some array. And we can say our array array filter 
some item and where item equals to something. So this is showing error because I don't have this array, but uh, you get a point of this extension. So there's an, a, a lot of uh, these actually uh, these um, functions that you can use, but just uh, typing a few characters and hitting tab without uh, going uh, just by your uh, on your own. So as you can see here, a list of interesting uh, snippets is here. Also, here's an example. So uh, this is our own function snippets extension. The next one is called code snap. Uh, this extension I use when I want to uh, do a screenshot of a code to look like this here. So I'm going to show you this extension as well. Uh, I'm going to my component or anything that I want to screenshot here. And I'll just remove this. Uh, hitting Control Shift P or Command Shift P and typing code snap. Selecting this one here. Now, when I'm selecting uh, or while I'm selecting code here, it appears on the right side here. So you could do anything you want. And when you're done, you can just click this uh, this uh, image here, a shutter button, and it will just uh, show you a screen to save this as a JPEG or PNG format. So this is this uh, code snap extension. Now the next uh, one here is community material theme. This is just uh, a theme for uh, Visual Studio Code. So simple theme, and you select color theme, and that's it. The next one is Console Ninja. So this extension is uh, interesting also uh, because uh, this extension uh, allows me to see uh, loggings of uh, actually to console log some data or something that I want here uh, directly in Visual Studio Code without uh, going to a console of a browser. So for example, uh, as I'm in Angular right now, I'll do this on init uh, because I don't want to create a new method here to call it on click somewhere else. So let's say on uh, in in this uh, on init, I'll just say console log this name. Okay, hit save, and now if I go to a browser here reload this, go back. Uh, we can see here that I have some name twice. So it actually uh, run this two times. So uh, this is one option. Another one is to click here to this uh, show output or control shift P or command shift P and type console ninja and uh, show output and we can see where is it coming from here so we don't have to uh, inspect our uh, browser here to sell, to get the data there so this is interesting one here so that is this console console ninja uh, the next one is called uh, error error lens and this extension is also interesting for me and it helps during the code without getting the errors in console or anywhere in compiler uh, we can just see it in action for example here if I add I can just go here and close this and if I misspell this you see this red here so it is actually showing what, what is wrong or if I do something, uh, for example, if I try to log this here, I expect I get this error here. So this is this error lens extension. So there are other options, for example, missing semicolon or anything else. And you can install this. It has 1,361,000 uh, installs. So this is it. The next one that I have is formatting toggle. 
uh, this extension is actually um, just helping me when I don't want to have a formatting on my code. For example, uh, if you have a setup uh, automatically to format code on save in your uh, in your uh, application or in your uh, somewhere in your co code configuration, and you just want don't want it uh, to format your code uh, on save or anything for any reason, there's extension that shows here and just uh, disables or enables formatting. So after installing this extension formatting toggle, it just appears here. So you're able to disable or enable uh, automatic formatting. So this is the extension. Now going back here and another one here, uh, really important for me extension. It is called a Git lens. So what is about this extension? As you can see, 19 million uh, installs already. And this extension shows me uh, in some place here or in, in code where I click or something, it shows me the information about uh, Git uh, version history, uh, about uh, this file or this line of code, actually who did it, when, and also I can see the details. For example, here, uh, I can go here when I hover on this, uh, see the commit graph or anything else. So uh, this commit graph and these things are in premium version. So as I'm still uh, using this trial version here, uh, I'm just demonstrating the purposes here. The only important thing for me is actually to see uh, when I'm working in a theme or on a code uh, with somebody, uh, to see who did what in in some uh, particular space uh, or, or some some uh, in some function. So if there's something unclear or I just uh, know who, uh, who to contact uh, or who to reach and to ask uh, what he means uh, with this line of code, for example, or something about that uh, particular uh, uh, place there. So this is git lens. Uh, the next one I have here is import cost. This is also one extension that I like uh, because it shows me, as you can see here, uh, how much uh, memory is which, uh, which import taking uh, here. So so just uh, to calculate uh, imports, different imports here and to know if somebody is actually a large file, large import or small one. If you're looking at per performance of application and you can see that uh, some something taking the too much memory from the application, you can avoid it. For example, if you have some import of some li external library that is taking megabytes uh, to use, then you could maybe uh, uh, look on uh, some other uh, extension that is doing the same thing or library. So this is uh, extension import cost. As you can see here, it shows the same. So the next one is live SAS compiler. So this extension is right now is not uh, is not important in Angular application, but uh, if you're developing something other and you're working on on uh, uh, some f some project where you have uh, like a SAS and you want to do something, uh, for example, I'll just uh, uncommit this just okay, and now I'm gonna show you how actually is this live SAS compiler working. Uh, if I click on it here, it will watch for SCSS files here and compile all of them into CSS. So I'm doing this because I'm just, uh, I want to show you. So if I type something here, for example, in this standalone component and say some some class, okay, color red, hit save, 
it automatically compiles again and I can see it here and also if I have nested or whatever you want hit save you can see that it compiles like this so uh, this extension is doing actually that now I'll just undo these changes so I don't need them in this project and go back to this list of extensions so this was live SAS compiler I close this uh, now we have a live server uh, for example let's say that you're developing something other some front-end uh, let's say website that is not uh, just an application that is running like uh, angular or react or anything on node server and you would like to have uh, some kind of live reloading or anything there and I'll show you with this index here file you could just uh, install this extension here live server and after going here to this index file and uh, clicking on this go live it will start uh, a node server here and run my application there so now as I don't have anything here I could add something for example h1 and say okay some something hit save go back and it automatically reloads so as you can see here that is a local port local host and 5500 port so uh, doing anything here saving it automatically reloads so this is this is useful for that purposes okay I'll just remove this so this was live server extension another one is material icon theme uh, I like this extension a lot because uh, it adds a lot of interesting icons to my files here as you can see the list is huge and uh, what is it actually I can see these as you can see uh, extensions uh, th these icons here next to my uh, files so I'm able to see uh, that is HTML, uh, SCSS, component file of Angular or anything here so it is easier, easier to navigate and to see the files that I have here just uh, uh, visual things but it looks nice and it just makes the process easier uh, to navigate and to find something when you're looking like right here so this is uh, this extension is material icon theme the next one is also just a theme that I have in my uh, uh, visual studio code that adds some styling to my application so my, my visual studio code so this is just the theme uh, another one here is open in a browser so uh, what is it actually it has almost 7 million installs so this extension is actually uh, allowing me to go here click over here right click and say open in browser just let me find that um, where is that Ocean. Open file. Uh -huh. here it is open in default browser or and open in uh, other browser so open in default let's say Microsoft Edge here and it opens this file in the in in a browser so just to add that again the things that are removed reload and we can see them here it is not uh, live reloading as the previous one that we have but it is just uh, to open a specific file in a browser for example you are not using that live server and live loading and you just want to open this uh, this file in a browser you can open default or in another browser here okay this was open in a browser extension that I have and also one here uh, this one is uh, for pasting like a, a pasting JSON as a code uh, this is interesting one 
as it allows you to uh, paste uh, JSON data as uh, types or enums or models in your application as you can see on this example as so I don't have any JSONs right now but uh, you could just uh, install it and use it here and paste you see copy and paste as JSON and you see all exports and imports here as you would need them so this is interesting extension as well so this is paste as paste JSON as code extension the next bar is prettier if you are not uh, if you don't know what is prettier you should uh, you should use it I think that these here also are the same ones regarding the prettier but these are just for formatting uh, code formatting my code here so you have a configuration and you press ctrl shift f or command shift f f and it automatically uh, formats your code i don't have configuration in this file in this project right now here but usually it is just uh, to add some config files here that is actually uh, let me show you that Mm -hmm. so after adding this prettier prettier you just have to uh, add a configuration actually that config file that is new file Up. sorry what's going on okay new file dot This is extension dot prettier. See, and here you have to add your okay. Actually, I didn't have to use this, so uh, this was like this, and I just had to click uh, Shift Alt and F, and it automatically uh, formats this code. Uh, what is the thing with this in this uh, prettier config here you could okay configuration file prettier uh, so you can see uh, this that uh, that you could uh, add any configurations here in any format actually so uh, the one I'm using here is this yeah this one YAML here and we can see that we want to use this hit save and now after I click uh, command shift F it formats this code uh, like this so it's start with 4 if I add it to 2 save and press it again we can see that it changed so this is something about the, the formatting of our code so this is prettier prettier config so after this here i have another one that is uh, for prisma uh, if you don't know what is prisma prisma is uh, uh, let's say that uh, the prisma is a tool for managing uh, databases from the backend side so it is uh, let me show you Oops. Prisma IO and it is ORM for uh, a node and you are able to do with, with this Prisma you are able to manage different uh, kind of uh, databases uh, for your application and uh, uh, backend and to use this uh, Prisma there so it is useful I've used it in some projects and it it is just fine and uh, working as expected and 
this extension just uh, allows me to highlight syntax and format the auto completion and so on and so on so this is it another one here is core quokka uh, this extension is actually let's say playground for typescript and javascript so how does this work a control shift p and type quokka and you can say new javascript file and right now you can see that it shows uh, this uh, this uh, log here and you can see new file here we can play with it just say const a equals 5 b equals 10 okay let's see now c equals b minus a okay and if we try to do something like log this see we can see the output here as well as here and we could do whatever we want like uh, just to have a play playground here with these uh, within our project without changing anything there so we can just close this and there's nothing here so this is Quokka extension now uh, this one is called special console log so it is not so famous extension but uh, I like it because if I want to log something in a browser uh, when I go here for example and find some component here like this one here now let's see that I add something or I'll add something let's see mm, I mean it's name again okay name again and now if I want to add console log here I uh, press control oops, control shift L and it will automatically add all these stylings here and I'll just move this into my uh, on init function as I'm in angular here and when I log this inspect console oops I'm not in angular okay here the console you can see here my project line name here okay and uh, this is not uh, right now this is not working as expected because I I just get this name here but that was not the point uh, actually I had to add this name because I'm in or as you can see here this name and now we can see name again so every time you click actually you hit Control shift L it automatically creates another one in another color so you can get this again this name and now you see it in another color it is interesting as you are uh, able to track these uh, files to have a different uh, different uh, variables or everything and you can just easier now see them into the log instead of just having the same thing again and again it is also useful with objects or anything you want so uh, this is it when it comes to special console log that I use okay I'll just remove these okay and the next now next one is called Thunder client what is Thunder client Thunder client is actually something like postman but uh, I was looking at this extension because I wanted to have somehow everything in my uh, uh, Visual Studio code especially when you're creating uh, APIs and you just don't want to switch between applications to copy paste the things and go around so you would just need something like Thunder client so to demonstrate this I just have this JSON placeholder dummy data here API and uh, this here a uh, client has a lot of things that you can use and also to export the data uh, for example you could export the data for uh, postman postman if you want in the end 
or you can use it right right here click send and you see the data here you see headers cookies result you just have uh, almost everything like uh, in Postman, but inside your Visual Studio Code and it is in this tab. For example, you're developing API here, and for example, your API is here and you're doing the things, doesn't matter what, changing something, and you just click here and send this request again to see if something has changed there. So uh, you see that is really useful and interesting and easy to use. Uh, client so this is standard client the next one is called to do tree so what is to do tree to do tree is really simple and interesting uh, uh, extension here because it allows me to see uh, everywhere in my files when I add to do uh, as a comment to do something in my ex in my files for example I will add a comment here and say to do and it automatically highlights this and uh, in that case I'll just say okay to do change something and hit save okay and now when I go here to this to do actually to do's I can see the tree of components where I have to do's and I can go here and click here and it will automatically go to that one so if I add this to do to any uh, to any file any other file it doesn't matter which type of file is here you could do it in CSS for example add styling hit save and you can go here and you can also see that my watch CSS is working still so I have to, uh, just turn it off doesn't matter. Okay, you can see here that we have in this standalone component to do something and also in app component here to do st add styling. So this is a uh, to do tree here. And the last one here is typewriter for VS Code. This is just funny extension, or let's say funny, but it's some sometimes useful if you're recording a screen or doing something and you want to show something to somebody like recorded uh, that uh, looks smooth and interesting you could just use this extension so uh, to demonstrate how this extension actually works I'll just use this class here and control shift P typewriter and uh, let's say uh, when you uh, type this typewriter uh, you can say set from selection okay and now you can remove this entirely and uh, control shift P again and say typewriter and say play and it is going to uh, write everything for you that you also marked for it so as you can see it is right now typing for me the things that I had uh, marked so this is it so guys this is it when it comes to my list of extensions for now before this video to be honest I have removed a lot of them because I don't use them right now and I don't need them and some of them are integrated already in Visual Studio Code so I just removed them and uh, just narrowed that list so there's 25 extensions that I use and that I need and that actually I, and it's not that much that I need them but they are helpful for me and for my daily work so thank you for watching this video if you find it interesting and useful please like share or subscribe to my channel just to get more videos like this one or of development things thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye